Where is the little maggot? Why don't you ask Miss Ida Pender? You're mad. <laughs> You're mad too. You're a good woman, Mrs. Taylor, and he doesn't deserve your loyalty. Good day, Mr. Bruce. Don't tell me you've forgotten old Richard Buckley. Angus Murray sent me. I want some work. He did favours for you, did he? Fair <sighs> few quid in it for the bloke who gives us a happy ending. This is from the brothers, Whiting! I want to start back pulling jobs. Firstly, I've got a little pain in me leg that I want to go away. as always. <laughs> hey, uh, God has smiled upon me. God has, has he? Yeah. By oh, the, the grand architect, no less. I'm now gamefully employed as clerk to the chief warden. I've got my own cell, access to the library. Oh, it seems I'm not going to be star of the screen anymore. It's all turned to shit for some reasons that fucking defy logic. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, so I'm back to doing what I do best. Got an idea to pull a couple of high-end jobs. Hey, I'll tell you. You're on the team, Gus. <laughs> I'm in jail. Not for much longer, mate. We're gonna bust you out. Uh, now, Les, look, I'm in a great place, mate. The next five years will be like a holiday for me. It wasn't God who got you that job, mate. It was me. Oh. Hey, mate. You're working for the Chief Warden. Surely the least they can give you is a nice new pair of shoes, right? You take care of yourself, Gus. over a week, working through the night for Angus Murray to cut his way to freedom. Loves these girls. It's a baby girl. Her name's Leslie. You go tell him. Where the fuck have you been? Yeah, Les said five on the knuckle. Laura's had a girl. Oh, really? Who's the father? <laughs> well, she's calling Leslie, so I Gus guess. Gus is ready. Tonight's the night. Let's go. Yes, you've got a daughter. I said, let's fucking Someone go. Someone die and make you head clam? I will go when I want to go. The clock's ticking, Tank. See you at the party.
Make a toast to friendship. Because <laughs> right, friends are the most important things you can have. Mm. Right, in good times and in bad. <laughs> and Gus, I am your friend. And I think that makes you just about the luckiest bastard alive. <laughs> <laughs> so get down and kiss my feet. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. Charlie, let's get a photo. Uh, uh, no, hang on. Hey, Dick, just wait. Just uh, I want the original Burke Street Rats. Smile at the birdie. Yeah. Oh, what's going on here? Hey? You are about to go to fucking heaven. <laughs> How much is she costing me? Oh, you said you wanted the best. You just like a The more that I can the more you know Oh, it's not in front of the kids. It's not lady love. Well, if you want them here, they better get used to it. Oh, what's a man to do? Hey, show Gus his dick. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Just like old times. Yeah. Good times. It's all in the past now, Richard. It doesn't have to be. Not to my way of thinking. I protect you, remember? I settled my debt with you. What happened? There, stays there. Oh, I see. So you think just because you're out, they're not going to pass you around? What do you think this is? You know, the only difference between those people and everyone else is that they smile while they fuck you. They're my friends out there. They just broke me out. Now, all I have to do is cause one scene and you're gone. So go on, old mate. Give it a crack. Let's see how long you last. We'll see about that. I feel for a poor rider surrounded by all of us awful fellows. Uh, perhaps I should find some other accommodation. Fuck off. <coughs> this is my house, and I like having me mates around me. Now, Hawthorne branch of the Commercial Bank. It's on Burwood Road. And the manager there is a bloke named Berriman. And every Monday at 11 o'clock on the dot, he does a run into head office with all the surplus notes and the mutes. What are mutes? Mutilated notes. They go to Treasury for destruction. You can set your watch by this bloke. Eleven o'clock, he leaves the branch. Eleven thirteen, he's on the train to the city, and he carries the money in a brown case. How much are we talking? Oh, I don't know exactly. Who the fuck ate all the eggs? Oh. Oh shit. But he's the manager, and he does the run himself. So it's more than he trusts anybody else with. You sure you got the balls for this, Angus? If not, tell me now. You and Dick, you got to get him before he gets to the station. Mr. Berryman, Arthur will come to you soon with a big idea. Tank's gonna have the car waiting for you on Burwood Road. I take it he goes armed? Maybe. But you'll be on him so quick you won't have time to go for it. Have a good day. He's a soft target. I can take that for you. Oh, I said, give me the case! Help! I said, give me the case! Help! Shoot him. That's how it's done.
Oh. So it went well. The bank manager was shot. The fuck wouldn't hand it over. Angus wasn't up to taking it from him, so I... If you'd stepped in and helped, there would have been no need to shoot him. But did you kill him or what? Who cares? We got the money. It brings attention we don't need, Dick. Look, I did what had to be done because he couldn't do it. Well, there's an incinerator out the back. Go burn your clothes and that. And then I want you to piss off for a few days, Dick. I can't work with him. You brought him here, Gus. Remember that. There is no way Dick would have needed to shoot. You weren't there. Morning. Afternoon. God, you look awful. Yeah, I was sick in the chamber pot. Do you know if we've got any aspro? I don't know. Go check in the bathroom. Get a plate of the right of way down to Burwood Road. Make sure we get a view from the platform. Thank you. Afternoon, Fred. I look broke you had this one. Well, that's right. I'm just here to make him uncomfortable. There you are, you slack bugger. What took you so long? Well, I had to catch the tram as my Monday car was otherwise mysteriously engaged. Don't expect me to catch public transport, do you? Was the bank manager able to make a statement? Uh, thorough descriptions of two men. We have a shopkeep on Burwood Road says that he saw two men getting into a Hudson. Who do we know that drives a Hudson? Taylor. Mm. Seems you've been getting friendly with Taylor's wife. I've heard it about. Not very much of it kind. Not from me, Jim. Whatever's been said in that regard is completely without foundation. Good thing, too. Reputation's everything. Advice you'd do well to follow, Mr Brophy. Calm down, gentlemen. I was going to congratulate you on cultivating the relationship. Estranged they may be, but it offers us a weak point to exploit. And that's the aim of the relationship, isn't it? Of course. After you. You're looking less pregnant than when I saw you last. <laughs> yes, the baby's come. It's very good news. My wife's a knitter. She wanted to have this. Thank your wife for me. She thought cream would be a safe bet, not knowing if it was a boy or girl. A girl. Any chance you might know where I could find your husband? A little matter I need to discuss with him. No, and I don't know where he keeps himself these sure. days. Sure, sure. Sweetheart, little Leslie's ready for a feed now. Hello, Mrs. Taylor. This is the little one, is it? Yes, it's Leslie. Mm -hmm. After her father, goodness. Well, it's just as good for a girl. And who are you? James Bruce. Placement. She's a lovely looking girl. Best to you. These from him? His wife made them. Don't mistake that for kindness. He wants something. At least he's interested. While the good citizens of Melbourne spent their day of rest at church, Squizzy made the most of the empty streets, breaking into a major city bank, all for the purposes of revenge. You know it's not real, it's just for show. I know that. The cops are going to ask you who you saw, and I need you to describe these two ugly pricks, Ted and Bunny Whiting. And they'll put you in front of them and you need to say, yes, Constable, I could never forget those faces, because if you don't, I will make sure you die choking on your cock. If you have any doubts, and I know you will, you just think of your cock being shoved down the back of your throat. You'll know what to do. You know what? Here's a little extra for being Lord's Day. 
saw a bloody lid. Yeah, for once I wish Buckley was here. Well, I can't help that he doesn't work some days. You know what? I'm gonna make a quick phone call and then I say we take the day. I'm gonna enjoy shoving it up those whitings. They put lead in me, I put lead in them. Ah, the symmetry of it. Sun, the sun. <laughs> Still going on about that shooting robbery. Yeah, impeccable planning and a real professional job. I mean, that's pretty accurate. Poor bank manager. Harley would have made the papers if the bugger didn't get shot. I reckon we should send Buckley on his way. It's not worth the trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Buckley's staying with us, all right? He, he's got his faults, but he's the best enforcer in town, and he's better in our tent than anyone else's. What are you doing? What does it look like? You boys talking shop? Or with me silly? Ah, uh, yep. I quite like the sound of that. She sat beside me With her hands covered in mud She had a hook hood and her bamboo rod And she started fishing She started fishing in the pond This baby was so fun She hooked her heart like man You ever think about June? Hmm? Your little girl. What are you asking me that for? Because she's a part of who you are. But you must think about her all the time. Did you enjoy being a dad? If this is you saying you want to have kids, I'm going to start wearing double layer frangers. It's not happening. I didn't say that. But what are you saying? Well, I don't know. I just, there's some things about you I'd quite like to know. Well, what? Why? Because I'm interested. Is that so fucked up? I was a great dad and I miss my dead daughter. Add that to the list of shit you know about me. I was just asking. Well, I don't want to talk about it. It's shit. What the hell for? Harboring a fugitive, for one, and a little matter of a robbery in Hawthorne. Well, well, well. What do we have here? That'll be one Angus Murray, by the looks of it. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you joking me? Come on, you. Hey, let me get me fucking clothes on. Get dressed outside. Mr. Pender, I'll allow you some privacy to get dressed. We'll be waiting in the hallway. Bailed any minute now, Ida. You know. Hey, it's a good thing that back manager didn't cark it, otherwise you'd be royally fucked. Uh, yeah, quite a boon there. <laughs> Jesus, Ida, stop it! Come on, we're gonna be fine. I'm having a baby. Ah, uh, um, congratulations. Well done to you both. Um, Ida, my darling, if I may be so bold, I, I think. Les will make an excellent father. In jail? They're both going to be in bloody no, 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 no. jail! I'm going to get us out of here, sweetheart. Uh, of course, you, you didn't know I was on the run, so they couldn't possibly get you for harbouring a fugitive. Right, see, did you hear? We, we didn't know. We just took in an old friend, right? We didn't know he'd just escaped prison. Silly me. I should have said something. Should have said what, Murray? Time for a chat, Taylor. It's Ben, are you coming with us? What are you talking to her for? Let's go. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You go easy on her. She's in the family way. Really? Oi, get your hands off her! Hey, Ida, we're good, all right? We're... Talk to you later, Taylor. Les had been out and we brought Angus back with him. They ran into each other at the pub, I think. So Murray just turned up on your doorstep? Yeah. 
Tuesday afternoon, I was home with a head cold. Can I get a smoke? Nah. I just taken a tea cake out of the oven, so we all sat down together and ate that. How about your lady friend? Was she with you? Out. Um, dress shopping. I had no idea he was a criminal. Seems to be all she does, spend me money. Your fortunes are changing, Taylor. They always do with you lot. Oh, well, lucky for me, I've got a guardian angel looking over my shoulder. Well, it wasn't a guardian angel looking over your back fence when Murray and Dick Buckley were burning their suits in the good bank manager's case. Well, someone needs their eyes checked. You're having a baby? Yes, I am. Beautiful thing, children. I've got three myself, all girls. You yeah, Mr Taylor, he already has a little one, doesn't he? To his wife. And he had a baby girl. She died. I don't know. Not that one. His wife just gave birth. Another girl calling her Leslie, of all things. Won't be more than two weeks ago. Must have been a very busy boy that time on the run. Squizzy and Ida were bailed on the charge of harbouring fugitive Angus Murray with Squizzy carrying the additional charge of accessory to the robbery and attempted murder of bank manager Thomas Berryman. Has Buckley raised his head yet? He's up in the tower. Oh, I'll tell him to stay there. You didn't mention you had another kid. Mr. Bruce told me. How's that any of his business? When were you going to say something? Oh, what difference does that make? I'm not with Lorna anymore. Because you were fucking her when you were fucking me. She's still my wife. You're with me now. Oh, Ida, please. Calm down, all right? That's all behind me. Oh, it's as easy as that, is it? Just fuck off. When you've calmed down, we'll talk. I'd see sunrise and you'll hang for this. Detective Piggott was right. Bank manager Barryman died just before dawn the following day. Harbury. We'll argue you weren't aware Angus Murray was a fugitive. The fact that Ida and your statements contradict each other will be a bit She's of a problem. Up the cuff. Her memory's fuzzy. Excellent. Accessory to robbery and murder. To some degree, that depends on how I fare with Murray's case, but we'll see how we go. You're representing him. Yes. I asked him to. Ha! Yip de doo. I don't know how deep his pockets are, though. You might be doing it gratis. <clears throat> You want me to foot the bill? I can't even afford this fucker myself. I'll put in. And with what? You're going to sell your fucking clock collection? If I have to, yes. Huh. Henry? Well, it's not really my problem, mate. No. Nah. All the Eugenes in the world couldn't get him off. Right? It's just good money for bad. 
All right. right. Just like that, you're going to ditch him. Come on, Tank. Walk away. Don't be surprised if he gigs you. He wouldn't. Why wouldn't he? Huh? What he's looking at? Good one, Tank. Appeal to his self-interest. Oh, fuck off, Henry. What, am I expected to pay for Buckley when they get him? If they get him. Men of Harlock in the hollow, do you hear the... Shut rest? up, Gorman. You don't want it? What do you want? You. And you don't want anything to stand in your way. Good choice coming here, Rich. Nice place to disappear. You all right, Rich? No. Sydney tonight, you're going to be on it. Yeah. But you're never coming back. Because if you set foot in Melbourne again, I'm going to make it known far and wide who you are. Instead, we're down here digging holes for dead bum boys. Yeah, life could be funny that way. You're not wrong. Hurry up, Rich. You're gonna miss your boat. <clears throat> Gus isn't getting off, is he? Not a chance. Even if he does, he's stuffed anyway. Between hard labor and what the whitings will have in store for him, he's better off hanging. Bust him out, then. Cheaper than forking out all that money to Eugene Gorman. The stuff of the legends busting him out twice. Angus Murray. Snatched from the hangman's noose. Now, that is a headline. Could be done. What? 
Nothing. This is Gleason. Get it, Mr. Taylor. Now I've talked John O through it. It sounds very interesting. It's, it, it's a great honour. Right, well, let's get some beers. I've got John O doing my section on Sundays. Yeah, you've really done your homework. This is a good plan. Oh, good. Hey, Squizzy! Yo, Squizzy Taylor! Look, after it's all gone down, now there's going to be a lot of pressure on you fellas. Right? A lot of questions asked. You can handle that. Yeah. Hey, Squizzy! Excuse me. Say that one more time. Everything all right? It's fine. Why don't you finish up and fuck off somewhere <clears throat> else? There's... There's... I don't mean to interrupt your business, Leslie, but you have a wife and baby that needs you. Rosie. Don't disobey your mum, little man. What did I tell you? Maybe I'll take Mumsy out back and give her one. Now you be one. And best you stay away from places like this. It's a bad element. Oh, shit. Is he, is he dying? He's all right. We gotta go. He's not good, mate. Here, let me. I'm a little sweetheart of sweethearts. Did you see Les? Oh, yes, he promised to come. When? Well, soon. His job at the track, new responsibilities. He's been very busy. Yes. He's very important there now. He said that. A month after his daughter's birth. He's not coming. Rosie? Yes, dear? He's not coming. Well, yes, he, he knows his responsibilities. But he's putting us on the street. He wouldn't do that. He's selling it from under us. Come on, you saw the letter from the bank. You know, Lorna, something to consider. A little less salt, a little more sugar, and you might see more of him. Leave. Go. Squizzy was arrested as a conspirator in the attempted breakout. In predictable fashion, he would make bail. But he was now fighting a mounting avalanche of legal troubles that threatened to swallow him whole. As for Angus Murray, 
his case reached its inevitable conclusion. In sentencing, it is the determination of this court that you be hanged by the neck until you are dead. for that. Should be that Buckley girl. Yeah. Well, if you ever see him, punch him in the nose for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll do more than that. Now, I haven't got much in the way of possessions, but um, I want you to have all my books. You have to read them, though. Every word. I even keep a dictionary handy for the big ones. That'd mean a lot to me. You've been a good friend. You too. I'm so scared, Albert. Leave some room for the baby. You think I'm fat? You haven't been in to see Gus. Hello, Tank. He went and saw him. Is that what he told you, did he? I did everything I could for him. Mainly to save your own skin. It wasn't out of friendship or generosity. I'll go see him. They're hanging him tomorrow. Forge anywhere, Liz. Anywhere. But you don't give a fuck about anyone but yourself. You are shit. Don't come looking for me now. Tank. Said you went and saw him. Hello, Lorna. Hello. Where is she? Wait here. I'll make sure she never knows you. I'm 
I won't let you ruin her like you do with everything you touch. You should be happy. You're free. I've never done anything in my life to justify the extreme penalty being passed on me. I've forgiven all who have acted against me. And I hope all I have injured will try and forgive me. Nineteen twenty seven was a pretty shitty year for Squizzy Tyler. Mind you, nineteen twenty four wasn't a whole lot better. In April twenty four, he'd lost his second best mate, Angus Murray, to the hangman's nose. And even worse, his very best mate and right hand man, Albert Tankbuster MacDonald, had turned his back on Squizzy for good. In fact, all things considered, 1924 was turning out to be an Annus Horribilis for the little general. Hey, fella. Yeah, this is for your mother. You look like you need a feed, and it's not for gin. Pops. You know, I hear you pack Crops.
court today, I should be a divorced man by dinner time. What? Shit. Was it you? Who says it was me? Well, the tram driver spotted your car making a fast getaway. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. Only every crime in Melbourne, Squizzy Taylor gets the blame for. How come the Hudson's got a broken headlamp then? Are you accusing me of killing that poor girl? Hey, go and spit it out, Ida. Did you? Of course I didn't. How could I sleep at night if I did something like that? What sort of man do you think I am? Ida, I'm the sort of man that wants to marry my best girl just as soon as the judge gives him the all clear, which is hopefully today. You promise? Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, and a silver sixpence in your shoe. But if someone asks, I was with you that day. We went to the races, didn't get home till late. Do we back any winners? That's my girl. I declare decree Nysai that the marriage be dissolved by reason that the said Joseph Theodore Leslie Taylor did desert his wife and did commit adultery on far too many occasions to list here and now. Amen. No hard feelings, Lorne? Mm. Pay me for three pounds a week maintenance you owe and we'll see. Uh, two pounds ten a week. Ten pound a month, he said, that's two pounds ten a week. How's little Leslie? Patsy. I've changed her name to Patsy. Patsy? Mm -hmm. All right, come on, get a wriggle on. Isn't it bad luck for the groom to see the wedding dress before the wedding? Oh, I count my good luck every time I see your pretty face. Do you remember when we first met? <laughs> Liz? Apologies, Mr. Taylor. I am Lady Margaret Stanley's chauffeur. Her ladyship desires a word with you. Sorry, Lady... Uh, governor Arthur Stanley's wife. Uh, former Governor Stanley, that is. About what? I couldn't say, sir. I am but a humble spear carrier. Well, we're just on our way to the church to get hitched. Do me a favour, mate. She gets awfully bloody cranky when people say no. Thank you for coming, Leslie. May I call you Leslie? Well, if I can call you Margaret. Mrs. Stanley will do nicely. Would you look at something for me? Thank you. It's a scrapbook. <laughs> I've got one exactly the same with all my articles ever written. Yes, I've been following your career. Look at this, the Kilpatrick's jewellery job. When I think of the planning that went into it, imagination. Yeah, that was good. Very good. But imagine if you tackled a legitimate career with the same verve and vigour. Yeah, well, I'd just be like all the other bloody mugs in the street. Excuse my French. You could be wealthy and admired for all the right reasons. Well, I'm sorry, darling, but I wasn't born with a silver spoon in me gob. All right? I, I, I'm sorry, but why are you wasting your time on me for? We've lost too many young men. I don't want you to be one of them. Right, I get it. So this is your good deed for the day, is it? You're bored with the starving kids in India, are you? I'm late for my wedding. Let me drive you.
I could lie here forever. Sydney. What? The city. We should move north. Why? Well, I'll make a new start. You mean do something straight? Oh, all the jacks don't know us up there. The town's ripe for the picking. Plus, all the gangsters up there are sheilas. Never. Yeah, I read all about it. It's, it's, it's pussy town up there, soft as butter. We could be running that joint inside six months. What do you reckon? Where you go, I go. First, I've got to get off this bloody harbouring a fugitive charge. I really wish that bank manager hadn't died. Oh, it's the jury. That's the key. Got to get him to see my point of view. I mean, what sort of bloke would turn down a mate when he needs some shelter? Do you miss Angus? Before the murder of bank manager Mr T.R.V. Berryman was committed... You can't be serious. You gave me an ironclad guarantee my fee would be paid in advance. Now I'm just a little short this week. Oh, you? how droll. How very droll. Mr Gorman. Mr Taylor has elected to dispense with my services, Your Honour. Good day to you all. I'll be representing myself, Your Honour. May that please the court. Now, gentlemen of the jury, friends, I am entirely innocent of these outrageous charges. This is an ongoing and false police conspiracy against me. That's all it is. Not now, Mr Taylor. You know what? Mateship is at the heart of this. Shut up, sit down and wait your turn. Squizzy hadn't done serious jail time since he was a kid. He was famous for his ability to wriggle out of custody. So he didn't waste a single second imagining this time would be any different. All rise. Let's get this over with. Tyler, on your feet. How say you? Is the defendant guilty or not guilty? Guilty as charged. No! 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 No, 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 no! That's absurd! I'm an innocent man! And your time has run out at last, man. Squizzy Taylor. Yes. Take him down! I'm an innocent man! No. Oh, that's ridiculous! No! No! Squizzy Taylor's luck had run dry. Convicted of harbouring the murderer, Angus Murray, he was sentenced to six months hard labour in Victoria's harshest prison, Pentridge. Another word for hell. My dearest love, I'm happy to say our beautiful baby daughter arrived safely after all the rumpus in the courtroom. I call her Gloria, and she is truly the loveliest creature in all of God's earth. Be strong, my love. Dear Ida, don't fret on my account. I am healthy and well, and looking forward to being reunited with you one day soon. P.S. Tell everyone I'm doing just fine. Tell them all. Who knows what outrages Squizzy suffered at the hands of his enemies in the months that followed. He was alone and had no protection, so it doesn't take too much imagination. You don't look so pretty, Les. 
I'm having the time of my life. This part of the, uh, the happy future you mapped out for yourself, is it? But you're lucky. You're going to be out in a few months. Next time, it'll be five years. It doesn't have to be like that, Les. You could walk away from here and never come back if you're smart. And I've known you since you were a kid. I know you're smart. You've got kids. You've got two beautiful little daughters. You want to see them grow up, don't you? Hard labor doesn't mean I have to listen to that shit. Leslie was bottle fed. Didn't do him any harm. Do you want to go and sit with Grandma? Are you um, able to burp her? Well, what are you doing? Where are you going? I just need some air. I lock up at seven. Now, nah, mate. Drive me to the nearest pub. Your mum reckons I'm to take you straight home to her joint. Who's the fucking boss here? Righto, oh, no, Les. Whatever you say. Les is dead. Call me Squizzy. What are you going to do with yourself? I don't know. Go back to the race course? Don't know. I expected better from you. Why don't you learn an honest trade like your father's? No. Drop it. Look, you're never too old to learn. You're never too old no, to change. drop it. It's all right, fine. I'll speak with you in the morning when you're sensible. <sighs> Needs to be baptized though, and she needs a father around. I don't want you going back to prison. Promise me. Oh, I'm not going back there. I'm never going back there.
moment I first saw you, I was yours. That night at Henry Stokes Club, my heart skipped a beat. Why do you fucking little oh! ah! So whilst I'm locked away, you go we out and dance play. and a drink, and George took a liking for George, that George, oh, Jesus Christ, how long have you been fucking? I haven't been fucking you! Well, why did you get me fucking oh! loose? That's only for me to say, you fucking little slut. How did you? You, you spickable man! How dare you strike a woman? My God, how did I bring up such a vicious little bully like you? Under your hats, gents. Squizzy Taylor's gone straight. Bullshit. He's bought a barber shop. A barber shop? Oh, got to be a front. Well, let's keep a close eye on him. <laughs> the wrong move and. Uh... Be very careful, Liz. You just hold still. Cut my throat. I'll never forgive you. Ah, oh, you bloody idiot! Hey, no need to be rude now, Henry. Mate, that's, um, that's on the house. No, no, no. <clears throat> Good luck. You're gonna need it. Lady Stanley. Sorry, I only do gentlemen. Even that's a bit beyond me. I've always wanted to try out one of these. Oh, well. How about I give you a ride? <gasps> what does a straight razor feel like? Surely it must hurt. Why don't you hold very still? Thanks for popping in. I, I wanted to say I'm proud of what you're doing, Les. That's why I came. And to give you this. It's a cigarette lighter. A small gesture to say, 
Keep it up. I know it's not easy to change. Thank you. Margaret. This is it. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. Oh, thanks, Dolly. You're a brick. <coughs> well, it might get a bit noisy when I've got customers, but bang on the floor with a shoe. Just tell him it's husband up here writing his life story. Hey, thanks, Doll. You never deserved a shit like me. No. You really going straight? I owe it to the girls. Well, don't do nothing to hurt them. You have to answer to me. Squizzy Taylor, you sly little shit. Long Harry. Relax. You don't need a weapon. What are you doing back in Melbourne? Business. Business? Yes. In fact, I thought that we might do some business together. I'm out of your business, Harry. I can't hear now. It does make a change from diluting liquor, I suppose. You know what this is, Les? Cocaine. Well, you can buy it over the counter at any chemist. Correct. But not for much longer. You see, the government's going to outlaw it any day now. You know what happens when they do? price will go up through the roof. I have got myself a steady supply in Sydney. Contacts on the wharves. I am going to distribute down here. That's where you come in. No, I'm not in this anymore, Harry. I'm out. It's good to see you. Stew. I used the last of the corned beef and some Brussels sprouts that Dolly gave me. And a dollop of Vegemite for flavour. Ah, it looks lovely, Dale. Thank you. Liz, if we save hard and watch our pennies... What? We can afford a flat. With a separate kitchen and an inside lavatory. Yes, something to look forward to. I'm really proud of what you're doing. I mean it. When was the last time I told you I love you? Will you do something for me? For your daughter? Anything. Throw away your gun. Squizzy Taylor's good intentions to go straight couldn't last. He was sick of being a mug. He just wasn't made for the squarehead life. You've lost a pound or two, sir. Yeah, I'm down to me fighting weight. Just so. <laughs> Long Harry Slater had made Squizzy an offer too good to refuse. No surprise, he grasped it in both hands, plunged headfirst into the cocaine trade and embraced his destiny. Harry's on the warpath. Oh, who gives a fucking shit? 
You should, you little prick. <coughs> Have you forgotten our agreement, have you, Leslie? Net profits split 60-40 my way. Which I'm sticking to like shit on a blanket. Right. So how do you explain the fact that I'm shipping more and more gear down here every month and you're putting less and less in my pocket? Overheads, Harry. Cost of doing business in the big city's gone up. I told you, do not stiff me. You don't get a third warning, Leslie. Remember me. Slater. You do. I'm touched. Now remember this, Stokes. That mongrel terrier of yours dips me again. I am going to come after the both of you. This time, you're not going to walk away. Don't you threaten me, you bloody piss ant. That is not a threat, Stokes. That's a dead set fucking guarantee. Keep him in line. Taylor's been out on his own. I've had nothing to do with him since he went to jail. Thanks, Charlie. Now, what do you reckon, love, eh? Home sweet home. We're gonna be happy here. Do you promise? Promise. Think we should get a dog. What do you reckon, a cat? Maybe a pony. You just be careful, OK? There's nothing to worry your pretty head about. Now then, what's he doing here? Moment of your valuable time, Mr Taylor. <laughs> just go in. Mrs Taylor. Go in with Mummy. Hmm? Let's go in. What are you doing here? You had a chance to do the right thing. You made a good start of it with your barber shop and that. It took guts, Les. I respected you for that. What's all this bullshit about? I'm a businessman. Bullshit. You want thin ice? Dear sir, I feel I must bring to your attention the unsatisfactory conduct of this city's senior police detectives. I speak, of course, of Messrs Brophy and Pickett. Who falsely accused me of involvement in the cocaine trade. I can only presume they are creating a smokescreen to cover their own nefarious activities. Yours most sincerely, Leslie Squizzy Taylor, Esquire. That's straight out libelous. Clever. He's just nobbled any future jury. We're the real villains. Says so here in the newspaper in black and white. It's a lie, James. The little blight is out of control. He needs to be stopped. Permanently. Give me one! Fuck off! Give me one now! You don't care. Do you want to get yourself killed? Your place is at home what with my us, daughter. Liz? Can you What about go? us? You go back to jail and what happens to us? You go as your bloody child. Drive her home now. Don't you dare treat me like Lorna. Jesus Christ, the stuff that comes out of that woman's mouth. I treat her like a fucking queen and she talks to me like that. Hey, Billy, I like 50 to win, number four in the plate. Oh, you're gonna send me broke, Squizzy. Oh, well, you can suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Snowy Cutmore. You thought I was dead, didn't you? 
I ought to be. Except our old mate Tank Buster turns out to be a decent cove. Never had the stomach to do your own dirty work. Hey, hey, hey. get out of my way. Hey. Should have done it yourself, mate. Made sure I was good and dead. Because the only reason I've come back to Melbourne is to return the favour. Enjoy every breath, mate. Could be your last. I don't mind living in a cold water flat. I don't mind what happens as long as I'm with you. When was the last time I told you I love you? Don't go. I have to. Stay here with me. Uh, gotta go see you, mate. Please. Nah. It's got to be now. And everyone has to know who's Squizzy Taylor. On the morning of October 27th, 1927, Squizzy Taylor made the worst decision of his short, brutal life. He decided to go looking for Snowy Cutmore to kill him before Snowy had a chance to get in first. But it was more than self-preservation. He was making a statement to the world. I'm back and I can deal with anyone who gets in my way. Sometime that afternoon, Squizzy found Snowy at his mother's house. As luck would have it, Snowy was ill with a heavy dose of the flu. Bless you. <coughs> Tank Buster just postponed the inevitable, mate. Squeeze, please. Give me a chance. A chance to do what? Kiss my ass. We're mates. We used to be. I loved you once. Squizzy was shot four times. That's beyond debate. But was it really Snowy Cutmore who fired those shots? Well, the coroner of the day returned an open verdict. In the decades since, several alternative scenarios have been proposed. Bless you. Tank Buster just postponed the inevitable, mate. Hey, Squeeze. give me a chance. What are you waiting for? The gun was found in the lane behind the house, which some say supports the vengeful mother theory. But there's another, more sinister scenario, that someone else was present that day. A third party who wanted to see the last of both Squizzy and Snowy took advantage of their feud and brought a hired gun down from Sydney to help things along. Bless you. What are you waiting for?
Which one are you? Stiffy or Mo? Sorry, Mum. But if there was another gunman involved, who hired him? Nothing new in crims ganging up on other crims, unless it wasn't criminals at all. In the end, does it matter? The man died as he lived. He was a remarkable man. Talented. Yeah. He was. Oh. He was. I know he wasn't always a good boy, I do know that. I'm not a fool. Poor Leslie. <clears throat> he, um, he had this cigarette case and he wanted me to give it to you. For me? Wrote a card. To one who understands, from one misunderstood. I loved him. <laughs> so did I. And me. Though the days are long, twilight sings a song. When you live, live in clover. Because when you're dead, you're dead all over. Soon I'll find repose. And in dreams, you're always near to me. I'll see you in my dreams. Hold your chances in that ride. Absolutely. Squizzy Taylor was 39 years old when he was shot dead. Pickpocket, arm robber, jury rigger, fraudster, thief, sly grogger, actor, street poet. He was clever enough to do anything. And yet, he left behind a trail of misery. In fact, Squizzy was probably responsible for the violent deaths of as many as a dozen men and women, most of them honest citizens. And yet, 100 years later, we treat him like a folk hero, an urban Ned Kelly. So I suppose, in the end, Squizzy got what he most wanted. <laughs>